So this is a beautiful red maple tree. If you look underneath, it's almost entirely floating a couple feet above the ground. This cavern was hollowed out in the last year or two only. And it's an example of how bad erosion is getting. And eventually this tree will fall over and we'll start to lose a lot of the critical space that people use all the time. The paths, the bridge, the core infrastructure of the park. So erosion's a creeping problem, but when you stop and look at it, you realize quite uh, just how bad things have gotten. We're in Northern Manhattan. We're at the interface of Inwood and Washington Heights. And the east side of Northern Manhattan is historically neglected. We built this from scratch on what had been an illegal dumping ground and it officially opened in 2001. For a small park, it has a really diverse little landscape where the tide grades into the forest and into a garden and a little farm. Communities that use this area are historically underserved, don't have a lot of access to green space, so Swindler Cove has become a real refuge. It's an essential part of the fabric of New York City. I'm a long-term resident of Inwood. I've been up here a couple decades. I've seen the whole transformation of what happened here from the hellish landscape that it was to this beautiful refuge that it is now. It's such a, an incredible resource for the whole community. Inwood is a really special, magnificent neighborhood. It's kind of like old New York. Unfortunately now, a lot of that comes under fire, so we need to stand together to defend all of that. It's beautiful, very, very long, those trees. Everything is green. You can be come here and spend your weekend. Okay, so the Living Shoreline Project is essentially our attempt to try to protect what we have. Places like this are important for habitats, for birds, insects, because without it, we'll lose a lot of the trees, the plants. You won't get the pretty flowers, you won't get the vegetables that are growing, and you'll lose the connection to nature, which is important for people, because if you live in a city, you'll kind of get miserable after a while. Like, you, all you see is concrete buildings, and it's sort of like a way of getting out of the city without actually leaving it. When we really started to get concerned and realized we had to do something was when we noticed the rapid erosion of the remaining marshes. And it seemed like sea level rise had reached a threshold. All of a sudden, the marshes were vanishing. Climate change is very abstract. But seeing this park underwater, seeing the wetlands vanish, was a real wake-up call. We're losing critical resources and our communities are being threatened with flooding. Amazingly enough, for our site, there was a great solution. When we realized that we could install a reef that could help us rebuild the wetlands that could turn around this erosion and prevent us from losing the park. Oyster reefs naturally have a really complex shape, and so we're just recreating some of that structure that is key to an ecosystem. So first we build the castles. We're doing the reef first because we want to control the wave energy. So the wave attenuation generated by these structures will allow us to rebuild the marsh, and it creates a lot of great habitat. All those little nooks and crannies become marine habitat. So we're really excited. It should really transform the dynamics of a park that we were getting really worried about losing to climate change to one that's actually getting bigger and more ecologically functional, just from stacking these and positioning them correctly. The waves are coming in. To get to stand here and see the waves roll through and vanish was really beautiful. It's just a different way of thinking about working on the shoreline. Once we have the reef in place, it will be a much more stable situation and that'll allow us to work on the marsh creation. As soon as the grasses are here, we start to get all the benefits from them. Stabilizing the shoreline, reducing flood impacts, providing habitat, improving water quality, sequestering carbon dioxide in the sediment. So the sooner we get the plants in, the better and everyone enjoys planting. It's a way to invite community partners in, help take ownership over the project. 
Once the marsh is in place, we'll be continually monitoring it and looking for the establishment of wildlife. But we expect to introduce rib mussels and potentially introduce oysters onto the reef if they're not naturally occurring. We are, in this case, literally restoring what was probably here 400 years ago. These natural wetlands were throughout the estuary. So anything we can do to bring them back is great. Acre per acre wetlands are better than forests at fighting climate change. The oyster reef will extend approximately 500 feet along the shoreline. Fundler Cove Park itself is, is about five acres, and so in some sense it's, it's protecting and restoring that whole five acres. It's a fairly small intervention, but it, it's pretty robust. We're literally going to use science, we're going to be studying it, we're going to be taking data which we'll share with the city because they're going to be interested in knowing like is this thing really working because if it works they might do this in other sections so this is sort of like a little pilot thing that we're doing if it works really well then other city sections will they'll start doing that city-wide people are realizing we want different things from our shoreline we don't just want to drive along it and we don't just want to build factories on it and dump chemicals in it. We want to boat on it, we want to fish here, and we want to do all kinds of things in and on the water, and it's sort of just waiting for us. It just requires shifting our relationship with the landscape and realizing it's not about building a big project and walking away. It's about staying engaged, stewarding it, learning from it. It's unique to do this work in an area that is historically underserved and was really not considered an important natural resource. And we've made it an important natural resource. We've got it on the map. And now we're showing how we can help lead the conversation for how to adapt New York City shoreline moving forward.